Okay, so for number one here, we have a 30 microliter sample of blood. Remember that symbol that looks like kind of a funny looking U is micro, it's the Greek letter mu. In the medical field, your textbook uses that symbol, but often in the medical fields, they'll use MC instead of mu. So that'd be MCL would be microliter. So make sure you're aware of that. The reason for that is the medical fields were one of the first areas where all the information was keyboarded into computer records. And there is no mu key on the keyboard. So rather than having to go through menus to keyboard that in, they just change it to MC. So 30 microliter sample of blood is diluted with 60 microliters of NS. The diluted sample tests at 310 milligrams per deciliter. What is the true level? First thing we have to figure out is what the dilution is. And remember, a dilution is always serum to total volume, total solution. So in this case, the serum is our 30 microliters of blood. Our total solution is 30 plus 60. So at 30, with the microliters will cancel out over 90, which reduces to a 1 in 3 dilution. So now that we have our dilution is 1 in 3, we can use that to adjust our reading. Now here's the confusing part. The 1 represents the concentrate, and the 310 is the diluted reading. So you want to... It's hard to match those together in your mind because we've always been taught in a proportion you have to match things that represent the same stuff. This is what's called an inverse relationship. If you increase the amount of the volume of the solution, in other words, if you increase the amount of water that you put into it, you are lowering the level, the concentration in the blood. So as the volume goes up, that reading goes down. So it's, it was called, we'll talk more about inverse relationships in a few weeks. But so because of that, what you really have to think here is this number, the 310 milligrams per microliter, bigger or smaller than the actual reading. It's diluted, so it will be smaller. The actual reading should be a larger number. So since that is the smaller of the two numbers, it has to go with the smaller of the two numbers here, the one. So 310 milligrams per deciliter. So then we cross multiply and divide, we get 930 milligrams per deciliter is the true level in the blood. So any questions on that one? Okay. Good deal. Our second one here deals with the fact that there are actually multiple ratios present when we talk about a dilution. In a 2 and 9 dilution, how much NS should be mixed with 80 milliliters of serum? So we have that 2 and 9 dilution. And remember, 2 represents serum. The 9 represents total solution. We want to know how much NS should we mix with 80 milliliters of serum? Well, the 80 milliliters of serum, does that represent either of those numbers? The top one. The nine represents total solution. Is that what we're looking for? No. Could we use it to find what we're looking for? Yes, we can. So it is okay to go ahead and just find that number. So we're going to cross multiply and divide 9 times 80 divided by 2 is going to give us 360 milliliters. That is the total volume. So we have to take 360 and do what to it? Minus 80, which is the amount of the serum. Leaves us with 280 milliliters of NS. Now, an alternative way we could have solved that problem 
would have been to adjust this ratio. That is the ratio of serum to total, the, the dilution ratio. We could have created the ratio of serum to saline. Serum would still be two. What would the saline be? Seven. Very good. There's nine total parts, and two of them are the serum. The saline has to be the rest. Nine minus two is seven. So from that ratio, we could have then just done 80 milliliters is still the serum. If we were to cross multiply it and divided, that would have given us 280 milliliters. Yes. Yep. Yep. Yes. Yeah, you should either know, either you know that you either have to do nine minus two to get the parts of saline, or you'd find the nine to get the total amount and subtract it. At some point, you're going to have to subtract that out. Yep. Yes, because the bottom is always total solution. So if you're given the saline, you've got to add the serum to it to get the total solution. Yep. Yes. And that's probably the biggest mistake that people make in these is they will take that dilution and they'll just put the, take the bottom numbers being the amount of saline rather than the total solution. Sorry, I locked up. Okay, another example I want to do quick, just similar to that first example, is let's say um, you have a 50 milliliter sample of urine. And are told... to perform a two in five dilution now we're assuming you've done the dilution the diluted sample gives a reading of 290 milligrams per deciliter. Find one, the amount of saline to mix, to use, and two, the true level. I'll give you guys a minute or so to get started on this one and then we'll talk about it. So some of you may not be done yet, but so we're given that two in five dilution here. And again, the two is the serum. In this case, it would be the urine. And the five is again, the total, total volume, total solution. But we're asked how much water, how much saline do we need to mix with it? Again, there's two ways we can approach it. We can either use this along with the 50 milliliters and find the total volume and subtract it out. Or we could adjust our ratio to be two parts of serum. How many parts NS would there be? Three. Five minus two would give us three. So it'd still be 50 milliliters of urine, 50 milliliters of serum. And we'd cross multiply and divide to get 75 milliliters of NS. So either way, we're going to get 75 milliliters of NS. Over here, you'd get 125 milliliters total. You'd have to subtract the 50 to get 75 milliliters of NS. So that's the answer to part one. How much saline do you mix with it? How much NS do you use? Next is the true level. So any questions on finding the amount of saline? All right, so next to find the true level, we have that two in five dilution. 
And we have the diluted reading of 290. So down here, does the 290 go on top or bottom? It goes on top. It should be smaller than the true reading. The true reading should be larger. So that 290 has to match up with the smaller number. So we cross multiply and divide here and we get what? 725. So any questions? Okay, so you can see these dilutions are a pretty powerful tool. Um, what we've looked at mostly so far is using a dilution with a medication or a, a pure fluid like urine, blood, or whatever, and diluting it down. But what we can also use a dilution for is taking something that's already diluted and reducing it even further. Remember, we talked about our solutions and the solution concentration. We had the amount of that, oops, is there a question? So anyway, um, we're dealing with the solution, the amount of the active ingredient which is you know, the amount of serum or whatever, is equal to the concentration times the total volume. Now it could be total volume, total mass, or whatever. Um, we'll look at different ways of, of calculating concentration after a while here today. But anyway, let's say we have 400 milliliters of a 30% solution. What that means is the amount of medication, whatever that, that concentrate is, is 30% or 0.3 times 400 milliliters. So that gives us 120 milliliters of that medication, of that serum. So what we're going to use our dilution for right now is we're going to dilute a solution. So let's say we are going to take um, let's do 40 milliliters of a 42% solution. in a one in six dilution. And let's look at what's gonna happen. First of all, how much NS? Yeah, how much NS is gonna be added? <laughs> That's okay. So it's a one in six, right? So in this case, the one in six is the concentrate which is that for, uh, the 42%. So the one is, the six is the total. So we want the ratio of concentrate to NS, that would be one in five. So that's the 42% here, the concentrate, this is the saline. And we are using 40 milliliters so if we cross multiply and divide, my pen's been acting up today, so I apologize for the delays there. Five times 40 divided by one is 200 milliliters of NS that's gonna get mixed in with it. What that means is our total volume is that? Oh, the 200? Yeah, 5 times 40 is 200 divided by 1 stays 200. Our total volume after the dilution, yeah, we could have actually used this one to find the total volume. We could use the dilution ratio. But our total volume 
If we add those together, it's 240 milliliters. How much of the actual substance do we have? Well, before dilution, we had 42% and 40 milliliters. So the amount of active ingredient there is 0 0.42 times 40. Point four two times forty is what sixteen point eight milliliters. So we had sixteen point eight milliliters of whatever that active ingredient was, medication, um, fluid, whatever. Did we increase that amount at all? No. So we still have sixteen point eight milliliters. The difference is our total volume is no longer 40 milliliters, it is 240. So our concentration is just a percent calculation. Blank over 100 equals 16.8 out of 240. So now here if we cross multiply and divide, 100 times 16.8 divided by 240 We go seven, so that's a seven percent concentration. Let's walk through another example like that. So let's say we have sixty milliliters of. 72% solution is diluted. Oh, let's do one in eight. Find the new concentration. So there are two things we need to know. In the last example, I did the dilution first to get the total volume, and then I found the amount of active ingredient that was there to begin with. It really doesn't matter what order we do them in. So I'm going to start out with before the dilution. The amount of active ingredient. I'm just going to say the amount of serum. And that's going to be, how do we find that? It's 60 milliliters of 72%. Perfect. 0.72 times 60 milliliters. This is what, 43.2? milliliters. So that's the amount of active ingredient we had before the dilution. So that's one of the pieces of information we need. The second piece of information we need is the total volume after the dilution. I know I've got sloppy handwriting. Consider it practice for reading doctor's handwritings after you're working. I'll try to be a little bit neater. So, to find the total volume after dilution, it's a 1 in 8 dilution. The 1 is the concentrate, and the 8 is the total. So, we can use this ratio. So the one, we have the 60 milliliters, where's that going to go? The top. So then we will cross multiply and divide here. 8 times 60 divided by 1. 
would be 480 milliliters. That is our total volume after the dilution. So now that we have those two pieces of information, we can find the concentration. So we have blank over 100 equals, on the other side is the amount of the active ingredient, the serum, 43.2, if I can all work here, over the total, 480. So this was the serum over total. So we cross multiply and divide here, we should get nine, right? So that is now a 9% concentration. Let's say a 45% solution is used in a two and seven dilution. Find the new concentration. There's one piece of information that's notably missing here. Can anybody tell me what it is? The, yeah, the volume of that original 45% solution. We don't need it. Let's look back at these last two. Now, well, there's two things we could do. We can, of course, just make up a volume. You know, maybe just take 100 milliliters because 100 milliliters is really easy to find 45% of. But we don't even have to do that. If we look back up here at these two examples, let's start out with this first one. What was the dilution here in this first example? It was a 1 in 6 dilution. What was the concentration before the dilution? 42%. What was the concentration after the dilution? 7%. There is a relationship there. We have a 1 in 6 dilution. Yes, it is. So that is the same ratio. 7% to 42% is the same as 1 to 6. If we look down here, we have what dilution? One in eight. The original was 72%. Oh, there goes the pen again. And yes, it was 9% after. And those percents, those ratios are the same. So in a dilution like this of a solution, the ratio of the concentration after to the concentration before is equal to our dilution ratio. So we have a two and seven ratio here. Where's the 45 gonna go? Is the 45 the, the larger number or the smaller number when it comes to our, it's going to be on the bottom. It's the larger number. After we dilute it, the concentration should get smaller, right? If you add water to it, the percent should get lower. So to find that percent afterwards, we cross multiply and divide. And what do we get? Twelve point eight five seven one four two nine approximately. 
12.86%, we'll call it. Don't worry, it's not contagious. Any questions? Find the concentration of 28% solution after a three and seven dilution. I'm gonna give you guys a second to try this on your own, then we'll talk about it. When you dilute it, the concentration is gonna get smaller. Total volume gets bigger, but the amount of the active ingredient is still the same. Think of it this way. If you have your coffee in the morning, if you add water to it, does it get stronger or weaker? It gets weaker, so the concentration goes down. So we have a 3 and 7 dilution. Where does the 28 go? Bottom. That is before it's diluted, so that is the larger number, the larger concentration. So we cross multiply and divide. 3 times 28 divided by 7. 12% after our dilution. Any questions? Probably the easiest thing we've done so far. That's good. What dilution is needed to dilute 48% solution to 9%? Well, this one is backwards from what we were doing. We know that there's going to be a fraction over here. This is our dilution, right? And that has to be equal to the, bef the before on bottom and the after on top. Well, the before is how much? 48. After is 9 going on top. All this becomes is an exercise in reducing this fraction. What can both 9 and 48 be divided by? 3. What's 9 divided by 3? Three? 3. 48 divided by 3? 16. So this is a 3 and 16 dilution. <clears throat> That's it. You don't have to, you know. As long as they're both percents, it's okay. If you change one to decimals, you have to change the other to decimals. So find the dilution required to dilute 51% solution to 12%. I'm going to give you guys a second to try this one on your own. So we have the 12% is the after over the 51%. Both can be divided by 3, giving us 4 over 17. So that's a 4 and 17 dilution. I purposely gave you some kind of ugly numbers there so that you had to trust your calculation. Let's take the next step. That's the hard part. You always want to doubt yourself when you get weird numbers, right? How much NS should be added 
to 120 milliliters of 42% solution to dilute it to, oh, what do we want to do here? Let's go for it. So our first step, we need to find the dilution required. I heard somebody say it over there already. 14% over 42, you got it. Which is going to reduce both divide by two would work, seven would work, 14 would work. Two over six, or it's a one in three, right? So that is a one in three dilution. Remember, though, the one there represents the concentrate, and the three is the total. We want to know how much NS. So I'm going to adjust that to be a one to two ratio of my concentrate to, to saline. So we have how much concentrate? 120 milliliters, and we're looking for the amount of saline. Cross multiply and divide. You got it. Two times 120 divided by one is 240 milliliters. So you would add 240 milliliters of saline to reduce that from 100, 120 milliliters of 42% to 14%. Yes. Yep. Yes. We would leave it. And like I said before, you could just take this ratio and find the total solution and then subtract it out. If you did that, You would use the one in three with 120 milliliters. You would end up with 360 milliliters. And you would just have to subtract it out. And you're still going to end up with the 240 milliliters. It's just a little quicker if you address the ratio. No, it doesn't matter if you subtract here to adjust the ratio or if you subtract afterwards. You just have to remember that this three is representing the total volume. And so that's not what you're looking so for. So whatever you find, you're going to have to subtract. The biggest thing here, you know, it's like I mentioned on the first day, there's not just one correct way to do math. There's always several ways to do it. That's why I do these labels is so I remember what it is I have so I can keep track of what I have. So I know, is what I calculated what I'm looking for, or do I have more steps I have to do? I'd be careful here so I get a number that works well. Um, 150 milliliters of NS is added to 60 milliliters of 24% solution. Find the new concentration. So here, the first thing we have to find is the dilution. We're not using the percents to find the dilution this time, though. We're using the volumes. So remember, remember this is the concentrate. 
in total. So what goes on top? The 60. On bottom, there you go. So the 60 plus 150, so we got 60 milliliters over 210 milliliters. Our milliliters divide out, both of those, you might have to go through steps, divide by 10, divide by two. Um, both of them should divide actually by 30. Give us a two and seven dilution. So that is the dilution. What are we going to use that for? What are we going to do with it? Perfect. 2 over 7 equals blank over 24%. So we're going to go ahead and cross, multiply, and divide here. 2 times 24 divided by 7. 2 times 24 is 48. Divided by 7 is 6.8571429 approximately. 6.86%. 6 Any questions there? Okay, once again, it's one of those cases where which number is going to be bigger and which number is going to be smaller. So this is the 24% is before the dilution. So when we have a dilution, before, we're going to have two things. One, higher concentration. and two, lower volume. After the dilution, we're gonna have lower concentration and higher volume. Yes, the concentration will be smaller. The one thing that will always stay the same before and after is the amount of the active ingredient of the serum. Because you didn't, all you're adding to it is water. You're not adding any active ingredient. Remember way back at the beginning, we found the amount of the active ingredient first, then we added the water, and then we used that to go backwards to the percent. The amount of medication or active ingredient will, will not change. We're about two minutes early, but I think we're ready for a break. So let's go ahead and take our break. When we come back, we'll talk about this a little bit more. So for number one, the dilution required to go from 63% to 9%. How do we set this up? Yes, the 9 over the 63 and then it's just a matter of reducing. Percents cancel out. Both of those can be divided by 9. We get a 1 over 7. So it's a 1 in 7 dilution. Any questions on that first one? Okay. The next two do get progressively harder. How much NS should be added to 30 milliliters of 27% solution to dilute it to 9%? Well, our first step just like problem number one, is to find the dilution. We're going to do that by putting 9% over 27%. They reduce, oops, they cancel out the percents, divide by 9, a 1 in 3 dilution. So that's step one. Careful, 3 minus 1 is... 1 over 2, okay. So that is the, the 1 is the concentrate, and the 2 is the saline. 
Okay, the 30 milliliters goes on top. That's the concentrate. Over X if you want to do it that way. Then we cross multiply and divide. 2 times 30 divided by 1. You are correct. 60 milliliters. Any questions on that one? <laughs> okay. Well, then the second one. Find the new concentration after 200 milliliters of NS is added to 40 milliliters of 60% solution. So again, our first step is to find that dilution. Remember, the dilution is the concentrate over total. So what goes on top here? 40 milliliters. What goes on bottom? 200 plus 40 milliliters. So that's 40 over 240, which reduces to, you got it, a 1 6 dilution. So that's our dilution. So it's a 1 over 6 on the other side. X over 60, you got it. You cross multiply and divide, and it will give you 10%. Any questions there? Which one got you the number three? Okay, so the number three we're doing backwards. Rather, than, it's really the same problem as number two, just going backwards. Rather than giving you the percents and asking you to find how much NS, I gave you how much NS. And then we had to find what the percents were. Either way, we got to find the dilution. The link between all of this is the dilution. So let's say here we had that dilution of 1 in 6. Right? We could either go to the volumes. If we know the volumes, we can use that to find that dilution by having the amount of concentrate over the total. And I'm going to put in parentheses here, total is concentrate plus NS plus saline. On the other side, if we were dealing with the percents, if we know the percents, we can find the dilution because It's the percent after over the percent before. So all of these problems come down to you are given one of these or the other. Either you are given the volumes or the information required to find the volumes. So you have that volume of the concentrate and then the total volume. And you use that to find the dilution. Then once you have the dilution, you use that to find whichever percent is missing. Does that make sense? Or you're given the percents and you use the percents to find the dilution. And then once you have the dilution, you use it to find whichever volume is missing. You still look confused. <laughs> but it really, it all comes down to that same calculation. It's either you're given one or the other. And what, you take what you're given to get the dilution, and from the dilution, you can get to the other side of it. It'll take some practice. It gets better, I swear. In fact, I'm glad we had that question come up because that kind of leads us to our next step in all this. This ratio of volumes is equal to the dilution. The ratio of percents is equal to the dilution. Therefore, the ratio of volumes must equal the ratio of percents. Well, the concentrate, the volume of the concentrate is the volume before, right? Right? 
I wrote that kind of poorly and I left out an E. Let's try to. The total volume is the volume. Excuse me. The volume after. You wrote volume? That sounds pretty good right about now. I think I'm tired enough. I might be wouldn't need one right now. That has to equal, notice on the percents, the top one is the percent after. And the bottom one is the percent before. Yeah, that's, again, it's called an inverse relationship. As the volume gets larger, the concentration gets smaller. So they have to be flipped around. That's why they don't match up. We are going to label the volume before as V1. That's the first volume. The volume after is going to be labeled V2. That's the second volume. The, the symbols? Yeah. The, count, the percent before is the concentration before. We're going to label that C1. The percent after is the concentration after. We'll label that C2. So one is before, two is after. Okay. Volume is V, C is concentration. Stands for percent. If I take this little set of symbols here, V1 over V2 equals C2 over C1. I can rearrange this to make it a little bit more user-friendly. Remember, we can cross multiply in our proportion and those two cross products has to be equal. Multiplying this way, we have V1 times C1. Multiplying this way, we have V2 times C2. Those have to be equal. Now in this form, it makes a little bit more sense because we have the before volume and the before concentration together. Over here, we have the after volume and the after concentration together. We are used to seeing concentration times volume, so it really doesn't matter. You can switch this around to be C1 times V1 equals C2 times V2. That makes sense as well. This formula here actually comes from those concentration calculations we were doing a few weeks ago. This concentration times volume is the amount of serum before the dilution, right? Concentration times volume is the amount of that active ingredient. Well, this is the amount of serum after the dilution. Did the amount of serum change? No, all we added was water, um, saline. So there was no change in the amount of that active ingredient. So those two should be equal. So this formula could be derived a couple of different ways, but either way it is concentration times volume before equals concentration times volume after is all it stands for. So back to these types of problems we've just been working on. This formula can make it a little simpler on us. Now let's say that we have 120 milliliters of 30% solution is diluted to 5%. Find the new volume. So remember, C1 times V1 equals C2 times V2. We're used to, to making a concentration be a percent as a decimal. We don't have to. It's like we mentioned before, we don't have to change our percents to the decimals, but if we change one to a decimal, we have to change both of them to a decimal. 
it's easier to leave it as a percent. So before is right here. We have 30% times a volume of 120 milliliters. What do we know in the after side? It's diluted to 5%, right? So that's the 5 times V2. To solve this, there's just two simple steps. We do need to combine those numbers. 30 times 120. 3,600. Then what? Divide by 5. What is that? 720? So V2 is 720. What units have to go on that? Yeah, our other units were milliliters, so that has to be milliliters as well. So what that's telling us, 120 milliliters of 30% solution will produce 720, uh, 720 milliliters, not percent, of 5% solution. What's that? It is. This formula, really, all it's doing is taking those dilution calculations we were doing in the last 40 minutes or so and squeezing it down into a specialized formula that makes it a little bit simple. Now, one of the weaknesses of it is we can't adjust it, and this, this problem will point out one of the weaknesses of this formula. How much NS is needed to dilute 50 milliliters of 24% solution to 6%. So it's C1 times V1 equals C2 times V2. Do we know C1 and V1? Yeah, we know 50 milliliters and 24%, right? So C1 is 24, V1 is 50. We could, like I said, if you felt more comfortable working with decimals, you could do 0.24 times 50, but it's just... I'd rather work with whole numbers and decimals. On the other side, do we? which one of those do we know, C2 or V2? C2 is the 6%. So 6 times V2. What do we have to do to solve for V2? We're going to multiply. Yep. 24 times 50 is 1,200. Then what? Divide by 6. You get 200 equals V2. Now that is 200 milliliters equals V2. Is that our answer? No, the volumes that are given in this formula are total volume. Total volume before and total volume after. So this V2 here is total volume. We only want the volume of the NS that was added to this. So, yeah, we, we ended up with 200 milliliters. We started with 50 milliliters. The difference is the amount of saline added. So let's look at an example. How much NS should be added to 
120 milliliters of sixty four percent solution to dilute it to twenty four percent. I'm gonna give you guys a few minutes to try that one on your own. And we'll talk about it in a couple Okay, so let's see how we're doing. We got C1 times V1 equals C2 times V2. Which one do we have? What volume and percent go together, basically? 64 and 120. So 64 times 120 equals, on the other side, we have the 24. So 24 times V2. So now we do have to combine... 64 times 120, 7,680, yep, equals 24 times V2. Depend the work here, maybe. There it goes. So yes, we divide by 24, which gives us what? 320 equals V2, so it's 320 milliliters. Perfect. We have 320 milliliters is the total volume. Subtract 120 that was there before. So what we added was 200 milliliters of saline. Any questions? We feeling pretty good about those? Good. Find the new concentration when 80 milliliters of NS is added to 20 milliliters of, let's go 30% solution. I'm going to let you guys try this one. See what you come up with. We'll talk about it in a minute or so. Let's see how you did on this one, or how you're doing. So we have 20 milliliters of 30% solution. That's the one where we know both the volume and the concentration. That's usually where we want to start. So we're going to put 30%, 30 times 20 milliliters. On the other side, do we know C2? No, we're trying to find the concentration. Do we know V2? What is it? Eighty milliliters is added to twenty milliliters, so it is a hundred. So we've got thirty times twenty is six hundred. Then what? Divide by 100. What's that? So 6 equals C2, so 6% is the concentration. That is just fine. You went back through all the dilutions? That works. <laughs> hey, if that was, I mean, a lot of people find the, the C1V1 formula to be simpler just because it's all right there instead of having to go through all the separate steps. But if that would make sense to you, keep using it. Um, next week when we start doing actual dosage calculations, there's three different ways to do them. And I'll show you all three ways. And after that, I'm going to pick the one I like the best, but you guys may... Pick one of the other two ways to do your, your homework in. So whatever methods work best for you. How much 8% solution 
Okay. I got that backwards. Let me try that again. How much 40% solution is needed to create 120 milliliters of 8% solution? Again, I'm going to give you guys a minute or so to give this one a shot. This is one that people tend to try to overthink. So we have 120 milliliters of 8% solution. So 8 times 120. Or we're going to create 120 milliliters, it doesn't matter. We want it, we have 40%. We're looking for the volume. So 8 times 120 is 960. And then we divide by 40. Which is going to give us 24. Do we need to subtract it? Are we looking for an amount of NS? No, we are looking for a total volume. Did you? You had the 8 and the 120 on this side. Yep, and that's fine. Comes up to the same result. Well, because technically the 8% is the after. So it does make sense to put that on the right side. But they're, they're interchangeable. It really doesn't matter which one you pick to be before and after. They're going to equal each other. Yeah, V. I would never ask what is V1 because I mean V1 isn't necessary. Yeah, yeah, you could interchange. Them. Yep. Okay. So eighty milliliters of NS is added. To 20 milliliters of a solution to create 7% solution. What concentration? Have a good week. was the original solution. Again, I'll give you a minute to give this one. Let's see how you're doing. Now this one, if we want to stick to the before and after, the before, of course, would be the 80 milliliters. Oops, sorry, not the 80 milliliters. The 20 milliliters. That'd be the volume. We don't know what that concentration was. The concentration after was 7%. What was the volume after? 100, very good. The 80 milliliters of NS was added to the 20 milliliters. 80 plus 20 is 100. So we combine the 700 or seven times 100 to get 700. And then divide by 20. So we get C1 is 35. And of course, that's a concentration, so that is 35%. Very good. So you can see there are a lot of applications. All of this really is dilutions, but this is a shortcut formula for dealing with some of these applications of our dilutions. Okay, the last thing I want to leave you guys with, um, if you have your books now, you we're not actually going to, to study this real intensely in here because this is a math class, not a medical course. 
and you're not going to be tested on it, but it's something that you should be familiar with so that some of the problems you come up with, um, you can understand more easily. This is in your book on page 150. And what they're talking about here is medical abbreviations. Now, all of these are going to be important to you in, in the nursing program or paramedic or whatever program you're in. To us, the ones that are going to be the most important are the ones that deal with time. Um, we don't care whether it's given orally, intermuscularly, or intravenously. And that doesn't affect the math behind it. Obviously, in the field, it does make a difference whether you give it to them orally or intravenously. Um, but for us, you know, abbreviations like Q4H every four hours. Or QID four times a day. The big difference, of course, every four hours, if you get those mixed up, every four hours is really how many times a day? Yeah, 24 hours in a day divided by four is six times a day. So we need to be careful with those as we start doing dosage calculations. For example, let's say the safe dosage the safe dose is 2,400 milligrams per day. How much can be given Q4H? Yeah, 2,400 milligrams divided by six times a day. That'd be 400 milligrams per dose, yes. How much could be given QID? That's 2,400 milligrams divided by four times a day. So that's, you can give up to 600 milligrams per dosage if that were the case. Obviously, if you mix these up, and you look at Q4H and think four times a day and give them the 600 milligrams. You've given them, well, too much. 600 times six is 3,600. You've actually given them 50% too much. Most of your medications, by the way, and I'm not going to, outside of your, your heavy uh, sedatives and pain relievers, most of your medications are designed that you can go up to double the dose without being harmful. Um, don't quote me on that because I'm not a medical expert, but that is your safety margin. Um, you do? Yeah. Um, what type of medications are you working with? Okay. And you're pushing them up to that almost double what the, yeah. Sure. Go above the. Okay. You can give it or not? Okay. Yeah. We have it record signed off. Yeah. Yep. And you can't ever, you can't, re just because it's been authorized once, you can't repeat it without authorization. No, actually, it doesn't surprise me to hear that it's locked down that tight. I actually did a quality control, I used to do a lot of consulting work, and I did a quality control, uh, deal with a medical facility several years ago 
and the, it started out as dealing with customer service of they were dealing with how quickly calls were answered coming in but we ended up doing a survey of the whole building because they were just they weren't making the type of money they thought they should be and it was something like 22 percent of their medications were not making it that were coming in the door were not making it to patients I mean, the amount of medications that were walking out was just incredible. And that's almost one-fourth. That's between a fifth and a fourth of their medication was disappearing. Yeah. You know, that, that's something that I've actually been shocked that I haven't seen in this area. I mean, you go to bigger cities, most of the ERs have metal detectors coming in the door because people bring in weapons, but that's their intention is to, to steal medications. Where's that at? St. Croix? Okay. That's what's close enough to the Twin Cities. That, Okay. Oh, wow. Okay. I, you know, somebody told me once, most ERs, if you walk in, you know, they get the automatic doors, you don't just, one doesn't open, then you go straight in the other. You go in and you go off to the side. And I'm trying to remember what the reasoning was, but. Yeah, the first one up here was the one that we did last week. I was told what the reason was for that offset door at one time too, and I can't remember what it was now, but it wasn't. I thought it was just for wind coming in and that's not what it was. Yeah. It was, it was for security reasons, but I can't remember what it was. If it makes it, I think it was about slowing people down if they were trying to leave or something like that. It forced them to, to look at the security camera or whatever. Okay, so pages that cover this stuff. Again, the page we gave last week was page 130 to 132, 1 through 37, the odds. Dealing with just the dilutions. The new stuff from this week, pages 134 and 138, doing the odd numbered questions there. Um, if you want, if you need to do the even ones for extra practice, please feel free. Remember, the solutions are posted to those. Um, there's some of them are in the back of the textbook and some of them are, the rest of them are posted on Blackboard if you want to look them up. Okay, I think you guys have had enough for this week. So you guys have a great week. We'll see you next Friday. Um, so we have two more lectures. So three weeks from today will be our next unit test.